Hello. Hello and welcome to the last day of Expolingua Online. I am Ekaterina from Expolingua team and I'm happy to welcome four wonderful content creators today. Pablo from Dreaming Spanish, Anna from English Like a Native, Maud from Learn Thai with Maud and Davide from Podcast Italiano. Welcome everyone. And let us start from an introduction round. Uh, can you tell us where you are originally from, where you are based now, the names of your channels and what you teach there? Very briefly. Uh, okay, shall I start? Yes. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm David. I'm from Italy. I live in Torino. I was born and raised here and I'm still here. Um, my, my channel is called Podcast Italiano. Actually, it was... the. Um, It's a podcast and YouTube channel, and the podcast came first in 2016, and then I opened up the YouTube channel one year later, and uh, and I'm doing this full time. I've been doing this um, as my main job for, as my only job actually for uh, two years, one year and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and, and I teach Italian. Maybe I forgot to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what's the name of your podcast? It's called, uh, both the podcast and YouTube channel are called Podcast Italiano. Mm -hmm. I know it's funny because it's on YouTube, but it's called Podcast, but that's because <laughs> the podcast came first and then it just became kind of the brand. And so I, uh, and that's the name of the YouTube channel as well. Right. Okay. Uh, my name is Pablo and my channel is Dreaming Spanish. I'm, I'm from Spain, but I'm based in Bangkok right now. And yeah, I have a YouTube channel and now also a website, both called uh, Dreaming Spanish. And there, me and other teachers, we teach Spanish with comprehensible input. So we don't teach uh, through, through translation, we don't teach grammar. We just create content that's itself interesting, that's easy to understand, that's in Spanish. But you're not learning Spanish, you're learning other things and at the same time getting used to, to Spanish. Mot, you can Hi. go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mot. I am in Thailand. I used to live in Bangkok, but now I moved to down south in Samui Island. And I started my business, LearnThaiWithMot.com, over 10 years ago. But before, actually, before I started um, my business, I used to work in um international audit firms but i decided that i want to work for myself and i enjoy languages so i decided i want to teach thai language and um right now i i have three teachers in my team mm -hmm. we offer both uh, private online lessons and group classes through zoom and um my main focus is to create contents to uh, get students into um, my uh, group classes. And we want to focus on teaching realistic Thai because um, if you read textbook, a lot of Thai language are old fashioned and too formal. It's not what we really speak in real life. So our lesson focus on what native actually speak. Mm -hmm. Mort, actually yeah. you have stolen my questions for the future, but we will get back to it. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, okay. Hi, everyone. Again, thank you for um, inviting us to come and talk um, on this platform. Um, my name is Anna. I run the YouTube channel English Like a Native, and I have other platforms as well, as I'm sure many of us do um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and <laughs> TikTok. I've just ventured into the world of TikTok. And I have my own website as well, EnglishLikeAnative.co.uk, where we sell courses in things like pronunciation, um, intermediate and advanced English and business English as well, and a conversation club as well. Um, like Pablo, uh, I try to steer away from teaching kind of formal English, like textbook, um, grammar. Um, we try to, the whole point of the name English Like a Native is to try and teach people in a way that native speakers learn. So native speakers in the UK don't learn grammar. We just, we just pick things up. And as a result, many natives have kind of standard mistakes that we make. 
Um, it's just a part of our nature, our culture and our language. And, um, and so that's what I try to teach. I just try and teach very, very natural ways of acquiring English in, in fun, fun educational ways, hopefully. That's me. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, maybe you can tell us if you are the only person who are working for your channel or do you have a team? Uh, I know some of you have already mentioned this, but um, how, do, how do you organize your work? Are there any special working hours you set for yourself or do you have assistance or anyone helping you with the channel or websites? So what are your daily tasks like? Maybe Anna, you can start. Uh, yeah, sure. So. Um... At the moment, I'm I'm a mum of two very young children, one year old and a three year old. So it's always a juggle having as much to do in terms of the content, running the sites and the courses and having two very young children who are constantly sick. Um, <laughs> it's just the nature of young children. Um, so what I tend to do is as I've built the business, initially it was just me. And I think that's important when you're doing kind of work online, creating content online is to understand every aspect. So understanding the script writing, the content curation, and then creating how the production works, understanding about sound quality, video quality, and then editing it together, how you tell a story, um, and then putting it out, understanding the metadata, understanding the algorithms, how to reach people, find your audience, connecting with your audience to learn how they receive the content. Um, so I think it's so important to start there. As it then grows, it becomes this huge beast that's impossible. As once you take the leap to full time, it is impossible really to, to do everything yourself and grow. Um, so I, st I think my first port of call was to employ an editor. So I've always had an editor from about three years in. Um, and I've had so about the last four years I've worked with an editor and then my next step was to get a um, social media manager so someone who helped me to do um, telling everyone that I was putting out a video across the platforms and create content that would be suitable for all the different places um, and to respond to comments as well in some cases so that everyone still you know was getting a response and corrections and things and then I um, moved to get help with actual content creation. So I, I employed a script writer to help me to create scripts that we'd work on together before I went to film. Um, and then starting the actual business, then you need help from like web designers and, and all sorts of course creators and things like that. Um, so off and on, I've had quite large teams. It changes depending on what the needs are. And what I tend to do now because I've got such a busy schedule is I'll have one filming day a week so I'll try and get all the content ready in advance and then um, film three to seven videos in one go as much as I can and then I send it all off in bulk to my editor who will work on turning around a video every two days and so over the week then I'll start to get the material back um, but yeah it's it's really hard to manage. It's a lot, it's a lot. And we're now looking to expand and employ more people to help us. Yesterday, we figured out that um, some content creators get help actually from their subscribers, that mm -hmm. uh, they hire even <laughs> their subscribers. But yeah. just as an idea, if you are looking for someone, maybe you just, you know, ask your uh, followers. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good point. I, so many people I've worked with actually have been people who follow the brand in some form. Um, and like I recently just started working with someone who's a student of mine mm -hmm. and it's because those people are the perfect people to work with there's so much talent usually in your audience and mm -hmm. they know your brand and they are also the receiver of your product so they know how it should look and feel and how it will best benefit that, that audience because they are the audience and so I always think they're the, the best people to work with yeah more than what about you you already said that you have three teachers uh, at the Learn Thai with Mod School, right? Yes, but for uh, creating contents, I started just me, and then five years in, I had uh, I had one teacher to join my team. Mm -hmm. So we um, did the videos together. We like to do scenarios, situations about real Thai language. But I was the only one to edit the video, think about the script, like write the script. And still until today, 
Um, I am doing the editing myself. Mainly I write the script myself and um, my team member, she will film um, the script that I sent to her and then she sent the, uh, the clips back to me to edit. But um, I like um, Anna's uh, business uh, structure and also thinking about um, hiring the editor or other to help the process. And um, for my um, working plan, I uh, upload the video just once a week. So I film one or two per week and then try to upload over the weekend. Mm -hmm. So pretty straightforward. Right. And what about Instagram channel? I, I think you also have a channel. There. All right. Um, for Instagram channel, I, um, the content is different from YouTube channel because YouTube is quite um, long, maybe five to 10 minutes. But Instagram, I try to do very quick lessons, one minute. So for Instagram, it's more of what inspires me each day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no plan for Instagram. Right. So, <laughs> So what comes to my mind on that day, I, I, I want to talk about this, I would just do it. Yeah, no plan yeah. sometimes is a good plan. <laughs> yes. Okay, Pablo. And, uh, yeah, oh, please. Sorry. No, please go. <laughs> uh, yeah, in my case, it was never even the plan from the beginning to to be a YouTuber or to, to be myself uh, teaching and, and acting in the videos. And from the beginning, I always said that if I had the money, I wouldn't even have made a channel where we teach Spanish. It would have been a channel about teaching Chinese. So I could have been learning at the same time as, as we're making the content. Uh, but yeah, I started by myself. I started without money and I'm a native Spanish speaker. So I started uh, with Spanish. And it's still in the plans to eventually have most of the content be made by other people. Um, I haven't made as much progress in delegating work as, as Anna has made, but I'm, I'm there. Uh, I'm working on delegating more and more stuff. Um, right now we have six other people making content, uh, either content for the YouTube channel or private like premium content for our website that people get when they subscribe. Uh, but most of these teachers are working just an, an hour or two a week. So there's just producing a few videos every week, but not yet hire full time. But um, this year, uh, something very good happened. I found a co-founder and investor for this project. So we're planning sometime next year to go uh, and hire a few people full time and increase the production pace and create like a complete Spanish course. Um, in my case, some of the videos that I make are kind of elaborate and require quite a bit of research. So for me, delegating the scripts of the videos was actually one of the first steps that I, that I made. Mm -hmm. And I tried also delegating the editing of the videos, but I failed like a couple of times, it didn't work out. Eventually I managed to find a video editor that I'm, I'm happy with. And now he's been editing the videos for the last few months and he's been editing almost all the videos and, and it's really good. It's really helped me have more time. Um, I'm really lucky because I'm, I studied computer science and I worked as a developer before. So I, I started developing the website my, by myself and all the way until now, I've been doing most of the work. Now also we're looking for a developer though, because it's also something, uh, it would be nice to take off my shoulders and be able to focus on strategy and uh, creating the best content possible and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's, I'm like, from me, from the beginning, the idea was to grow, to really produce something that people could use as their main resource to learn Spanish. And, and hopefully sometime next year, we'll, we'll get there. Fingers crossed for the next year. <laughs> David? Yes. Um... So I'm still mainly doing most things on my own, but I'm planning to to delegate more and more to people. I've started doing that. Um, started to delegate some of the most boring tasks uh, uh, that uh, need to happen for for the videos or, or podcasts, like the subtitles, tra transcripts, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's something that I want to do more of in in the future. Um, right now, I'm 
making a video a week so that's the main thing i'm doing and then i have the patreon where i have bonus content um but yeah and and also the podcast which doesn't really have a fixed schedule so whenever i i i manage to make an episode i, I publish it it tends to be one once a month but uh, it doesn't have a fixed schedule so yeah i'm mainly doing i'm doing most things on my own but yeah i, I find more and more that that i need help uh, and so I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking for, uh, right now I have some, some freelancers helping with, with certain things. So I don't have any employees, but I'm, I'm planning to, to get, uh, someone working for me full time in the future. Right. Maybe we have somebody today in the audience who would like to work for you. So if <laughs> maybe <laughs> write me yeah, an email, if you have, if you have luck, uh, you can, yeah, you can write us in the chat. Uh, the next question, um, why do you think, apart from learning the language, why do you think people are following you? Hmm. Because yesterday okay. was also a question, uh, people follow you for the reason. And then we um, uh, we said, okay, it's, it's all about the identity. It's about the naturality. It's uh, about like daily life and being not boring not a boring book so what is what are you what are your like highlights and why are you the the people who want who who are followed right um well i should ask my audience <laughs> they have nice things to say about me but um i i've always tried to be a little different from what other creators uh in the italian teaching youtube world were doing so i've i've always I've always tried to do something a little bit different. I uh, like Pablo and like Anna. I don't teach too much grammar, um, so maybe maybe that's some. But I'm I'm not the only one doing comprehensible input, to be honest. So I think it's probably like my personality. I'm I'm not treating the students like students. I'm not like today we're going to do to learn this tense. I'm I'm not talking down to them as if they're students mm -hmm. i'm talking to them as um you know as if they were peers about interesting things interesting things about the italian language um and and yeah so i think my approach is probably a little bit different to what most most people do in in uh, the italian teaching youtube um sphere right mm -hmm. Pablo? yeah i think uh there are a number of reasons and for not talking about specifically about myself but about any youtuber just people will connect with you and will will there will be something about you that they think oh i like this person i like whatever or something anything that you do different even if you're like really weird there's going to be somebody that like connects more with you than, than with other people um in my case though yeah like the way i've started creating videos it was when i started nobody else was doing what I was doing, which is use 100% the target language that, that you're learning, create a lot of content at different levels about uh, very different topics. So most people who who watch my channel, just there's no other Spanish or other channel where they teach Spanish, where there's such a big quantity of content where you can find videos about a topic that you're interested about and just, and they're so easy to understand. That's that's the main reason why my channel started becoming popular is that even if you're starting from zero, I would show pictures, I would be drawing everything that I was explaining. So it's super easy to understand, even if you don't know any, any Spanish at all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And Maud? Um, for me, I think in the beginning, I, I just loved doing role play. And um, my audience always commented that they love to learn through role plays and not only teaching language, Thai language, I also love traveling throughout Thailand. So I love sharing pictures or stories about different destinations in Thailand and um, also including Thai cultures. So my, and my audience are mostly have um, Thai, um, partners or travel to Thailand quite often. So they are interested to know about Thailand more than just learning Thai language. 
yes and including food i love eating <laughs> <laughs> always put pictures of food and where to eat and i also write um articles so not only doing videos on my website i have articles about everything related to thailand so that's i think that's why uh, my audience come to my channel mm -hmm. and my website um, for me, I think, um, similar to uh, what Pablo said, I think people just connect to a person. There's not always a rhyme or reason as to why you enjoy listening to one person. Everyone had their favorite teacher at school and it's just because they warmed to that personality or could relate to that person. Um, I know a lot of my followers enjoy the role play that I do. I, I have a background as an actress. I was a professional actress before teaching. And wow. so I like to act out the scenarios and the examples. Um, so, you know, I, I sometimes more, I do it more in some videos than others, but people tend to enjoy that. So they can get an idea of the real context. Um, and lots of people comment on the accents. They love, people who follow me tend to love British culture and the British accent. Um, maybe they're coming here to study or they want to work or move to the UK. And so they enjoy um, listening to me because they enjoy how I sound um, mm -hmm. and so yeah that's it really I, I am always ex experimenting with my content trying to find because I get bored as well I like to do different things um, and so I'm always trying new things and, and I think people just like that freshness you know yeah uh, well I think all of you are an actor in a way because you always have to record videos like in like when filming a movie or, or so, so you have to be <laughs> Uh, very relaxed and natural in front of the camera. Um, the next question would be about your mm, maybe challenges. If you have, because now you are having you, ha you are having a group of like-minded people. You are all coming from the same uh, profession. You are all content creators. Maybe you can brainstorm a little bit. What is your uh, challenge for today? And maybe your colleagues here in the round will help you to find a solution for it. Uh, <laughs> so we have some big challenges at the moment. Um, I've got two big challenges. So we've just launched um, a whole group of courses and everyone who's taking the courses love the courses. Um, and we've invested about two years of, of work and all of our savings. So a lot of money has gone into, into building this platform and these courses. And so now um, we can't continue to develop the business until we start to really get some numbers in to kind of get the return on that investment. And um, one thing I'm not very good at, and I think this is a very British trait, is selling, is to be like, hey, I've got this amazing course, come and, come and try it with us. Even though I know it's the best course that we could possibly have put together. We've got people who are, you know, PhD level experts in course design, in, in teaching English. So it's the, the best possible way it's been put together. We're just not very good at, you know, putting putting the sales mess. I don't like to sell to people. I don't like to kind of force or push people or manipulate people in any way. I'm just like, if you want to, it's here. <laughs> um, so I think that's trying to change my mindset and, and to try and, you know, compete in what is an incredibly competitive market uh, is, our, is our biggest challenge at the moment. And it's, an, it's a necessity for us to get past this barrier because we can't grow anymore until we've got some more capital in the business to, to invest. Um, and then the other one is just trying to grow the channels. Um, when we got to a point of building our business, we decided to go back through our back catalogue and remove some of the older videos that either just didn't work with our new tone of voice um, or were videos that were very popular but for the wrong reasons and were bringing the wrong people to our channel um, and so it's kind of like cutting your arm off we had to cut off some of these videos but it's slowed down and stunted the growth and so trying to get the momentum back you know, is tricky, which is why I've been experimenting with TikTok and shorts and things like that. But sometimes it can feel a bit, you know, like you're, do, you're doing so much, but it's not giving much back. So I think any, any advice on yeah. boosting yeah. YouTube, YouTube growth? 
Uh, just a short comment for to the first uh, challenge you just mentioned. We are recording this video, and everything you said about uh, your course, it's the best course we have, we could have created with our team. So I will we'll just cut it out and send it to you so that you can use it as your advertising <laughs> video. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, but it's yes, tricky. Now, uh, maybe your colleagues can mm -hmm. give you tips. Advice on how to, to grow Advice. YouTube? Uh, yeah, specifically? Or, yeah. Or, or on, uh, I don't or know, that's a good question. Any of the platforms you're seeing success on or you have any insider tricks for? I, mean, uh, I, I, think, I think I've seen your channel. You're pretty big on YouTube. Like you have like 900K? No, 700 and... AT, oh okay then then it's not it's still, uh, it's still big yeah of course it's big. okay well <laughs> i've just passed 100k so um oh, amazing congratulations uh i don't know i mean it's the youtube algorithm is really hard to predict <laughs> we all know that i think you like for me what works is just keep keep making videos that i feel good about and i think are are useful and and people will enjoy and then you will have some video go viral quote unquote yeah. um I'm, i've never had super viral videos i've never mm -hmm. i never had videos um, being watched by millions of people so yeah. never that many people but like um some people will do better than other some videos will do better than others and then you, know, you get a lot of subscribe you probably know this already so i don't know if this is <laughs> that useful yeah, for me it's, it's just hard. It's like being regular and yeah, I try to be unique with my content. And Pablo, yeah. you said that you do something very unique with your stuff. But how do you then package it in a way that people realize mm. the value? Because sometimes, you know, if you do what everyone's doing and package it in the same way, then that's going to get you some views, but it's not your unique voice and it's not necessarily the best content because it's not what you feel yeah. passionate about. But when you do unique stuff, like I right. taught a lesson sat in the bath once, and I wasn't, I had clothes on, but I was sat in the bath and I was acting like I was taking a bath and I was delivering some brilliant um, text and, and language that was very natural language. And I thought it was a great video, but people didn't really watch it because I didn't, it wasn't packaged in a way that, you know. Oh, you mean people... the thumbnail, the title? Yeah, I guess so. You yeah. know, because you have to, you have to say this is an English lesson and, you know, let people understand what it is. But how do you Just make do it clickbait. exciting? <laughs> yeah, oh, well, that's the tricky thing, isn't it? I, I've, tricky. I've started experimenting with changing titles and, and, um, and thumbnails to see if they work okay. better. Well, um, how long because, do you leave it until you change, until you switch? Like one hour, and then I try and oh, change. Really? Or, or maybe okay. even less. I don't know if this is if this is working, but it seems to be kind of working. But then again, you never know, because <laughs> the YouTube algorithm is a mystery. But yeah. I, think it, see, I think it does help. Did you see a clear difference, like a step in the click-through rate when you changed yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, I've just started doing it for the last... Thumbnails. Yeah, yeah. I, I've done it for the last three or four videos. But I think in two of them, I, I think I've seen a pretty big change in, uh, in, in views. That's interesting. Um, but then I don't know if you want to do that because then you can get really obsessed with these things like monitoring the views in real time on youtube yeah. that can be <laughs> mm, yeah i mean you do have to give it a bit of time because you don't know when your audience is necessarily going to be on the platform so i maybe would give it 24 hours before doing a switch so you can allow everyone in each time zone to come on to platform like i would only go onto youtube probably in the evenings um so by that point you might have changed the thumbnail two or three times and i've not even seen one yet so you know right yeah, because usually on your second day after you upload the video, there's still quite a few views, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys. What do you, how do you, how do you get views? <laughs> how do you package your videos? Like, everything that I've tried hasn't, hasn't worked. Like eventually it started growing more like little by little, just from people recommending the channel to other people like on Reddit and in, in person mm -hmm. and stuff. But everything that I've tried to buy myself to try to make it more popular, to distribute it and stuff, nothing has had any kind of meaningful impact. Uh, what's worked the best is collaboration with our YouTubers, like appearing in videos with our YouTubers. But even then, it's just like a little tick that it doesn't really change like the pace at which your channel is growing, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess it does depend. My channel got incredible growth in the first year 
Uh, I'm guessing you guys know English with Lucy. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Lucy started six months before I did, and um, we we connected very early on. Within a few months, we were connected and became friends, met up, and then we decided to do a collaboration in the summer. She'd started in the like January, I think, and I'd started soon after that. And um, we did a collaboration around September. We put a bunch of videos out, and by this point, Lucy was already you know starting to really gain some momentum, and so then putting out a video with me in tow helped to kind of really give me that first initial uptick to a new level of, of you know, monthly subscribers. Um, and so I agree with Pablo and actually I haven't done any collaborations for a long time. So maybe that's the answer for getting mm. me out of this rut that I'm in just to find some new collaboration opportunities. So yeah, that's a good, a good one to think yeah, good of. Tips. Mm yeah no collaborations are really good i think for I mean, and they're also fun uh sometimes you yeah. get bored of, of making videos on your own and yeah. <laughs> and also the the audience love loves the interaction between creators they follow yeah they really get excited about that yeah especially people who already know both of you mm -hmm. yeah 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 because most of like my audience and the audience of other content creators who are teaching Italian overlap for the most part. So uh, most people follow not only me, but maybe three, four, five other channels. And so, yeah, they they like to see us work together and do and talk to each other. That's what I like about this industry is that we're so as a language um, niche. I think uh, beyond the other niches, I think we're the most connected. I attend so many events and I'm in so many groups where all the language teachers online help each other and we're, we're all friends on WhatsApp, on Skype and you know it's it's really nice and supportive and I think people just don't expect that we're all that interconnected. Yeah yeah I've started to collaborate even with people who are um, teaching different languages because I'm I'm into talking about uh, similarities and differences between languages and so that's also something that's that nobody else is doing I think in the Italian teaching world I'm collaborating with people teaching um, you know different languages I'm going to collaborate with uh, a Spanish YouTuber a French YouTuber so yeah that's fun and that's something that and then uh, what language do you use in the videos I, I always speak Italian in the videos uh, but I I'm I convince other people to speak Italian. So I, I, okay. I need to make sure that they already speak Italian and then they yeah. have a script or... Yeah, um, so I have the same issue. I, I know some people who are like quite popular, but if they don't mm -hmm. speak Spanish, I cannot feed a video in which I'm not, I am yeah. not speak Spanish in a channel in which the main purpose is to provide you everything right. in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, you need to find someone who knows Spanish, I think. Yeah. We have well, one, I do, if you want to know a collaboration. <laughs> We have one agreement about the collaboration from chat. Uh, Joel is writing, I'm learning Spanish, Pablo. I found and followed you through your collaboration with Oli Richards. Mm -hmm. So uh, one more um, one more voice from the audience that it's a great idea also for you, Anna. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what about you, Maud? Do you have uh, do you have other or do you know other content creators who also teach Thai or um, with whom you could collaborate? Um, I know other channels, but I have never approached them personally or nobody have, has ever approached me to do collaboration before. And uh, actually one of my friends from high school, she, she's Thai and now lives in Melbourne. And she, she was doing other jobs before and since COVID, she uh, was out of job and she came to ask me about um, teaching Thai language and started doing YouTube videos. So uh, she's the only one who I actually personally, personally know. And maybe this, uh, this is a good idea that I should contact her and we can do videos together. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've never done it before. Good idea. Um... So 
Do other uh, colleagues, content creator colleagues, would like to share the challenges or do we yeah, want to go to the... Maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. My yeah. main channel is that I challenge that I have too much work and I really want to delegate more and, and I've started to do that. But if you have some advice on how to do that, how to find people uh, to work for you and how to start hiring, because as I said, at some point, I would like to do that. And also, um, yeah, because I, I want to have more time. I would like to build a course. I, I haven't done that yet. Um, but since I have the Patreon and I'm making so much content for the Patreon and, and my regular content, uh, I just don't have the time and energy to do it. And, and then I feel bad because I, I know that I should be doing it, but I don't know when and how. So that's my challenge. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, would, yeah, actually, would... oh, come on, you kind of, David, you kind of take it, you kind of took it from me, and maybe Anna can be the one who solves our <laughs> problems. Yeah, Anna seems the yeah. master of Because yeah. I've done it a bit, but I still struggle a lot. Yeah. Because I have a certain amount of time in a week, and I feel it, so I, I try to make the most out of it and fill all my time. What that means is that in the future, if I want to take part of that and delegate it on somebody else, I don't have the time anymore to look for people who could do the job to train the person who could do the job because all that is time extra that I need to spend in the week, mm -hmm. not doing other things that I suppose I should mm -hmm. be doing that maybe I promised my audience that would be doing. Uh, right. So yeah, maybe Anna, you can, you can tell us a bit. How you doing. <laughs> okay. So I was in the first step when you're, you're finding a team is to think about the one, the tasks that you like doing least. I mean, that's the mm -hmm. most important thing because as creators, we suffer with burnout and, and you know, our mental well-being is, is important. We do so much and, it, and it's relentless. It's ongoing. So <clears throat> find the tasks that you like doing least, whether it's editing or content, um, you know, curation, cre uh, creating scripts um, or being in front of the camera. Maybe you're not the one who's, you know, um, Margie was saying you give your scripts to someone else to film. So find the point in the process that you are least happy and you find it to be such a chore. And that's the first point of call to find someone to help you. Um, for me, I would prefer to have, I'd li I like all most of the parts of what I do. I don't like the marketing and I don't like um, doing all the admin that comes with you've created a video, then you have to upload it, do your metadata, do your thought. I don't like that bit. Um, so, you know, find, you can find someone to do any part of your process, but figure out what that process looks like and what you'd like to delegate first. Then you have to think about hiring the person and can you afford to? Um, so Pablo, you said, sometimes I just don't have the time to think about hiring. And I know, I know that, that feeling because I'm always there myself, but it isn't a crazy thing to say, I've got too much to do and I have no time, therefore I need help. But I don't have time to find the help. You have to make the time because as soon as you have that person in place, it's going to make the world of difference. And the only thing you're going to do carrying on with what you're doing is to go deeper and deeper into this hole and bury yourself in work. And so you have to make the time. I always think we become a bit obsessed with what we promise to our audience. Like, oh, I have to upload every Sunday. I have to do a short every day. I have to do this live because I've said I would. But we don't. You know, unless you have, I think unless someone is paying for your service, sometimes it's okay to take a step back and say to your audience, I just need a few weeks off because I need to sort some things out or I need some space. And usually if the right people following you, they will fully support you to do that. Um, so I've many times taken a step back from what I'm doing because I need to rethink or have babies or whatever I'm doing. Um, and my audience has always remained there and been supportive all the way through. Um, so take a step back and then start the hiring process and sort your, your business model out. Um, hiring is, it's difficult. You can, I think I went through five or six editors before I found one that worked. And then the okay. one that was great stayed with me for a year and then moved on. And I was like, no. And then I went through three more editors. So I found another one who was great. And then he moved on. And now I have an editor who's, who, who gets the job done. They're not as creative as I want them to be, but then I'm quite a perfectionist. So maybe the problem is me and not them. Um, and it is a difficult thing. I always, people will suggest looking on places like Upworks or Facebook groups, I think are a great place if you have like niched Facebook groups for like um, 
a web developer, a web developer, for example, we use Divi and LearnDash and uh, WordPress for our website. And so I'm going to look specifically at a Divi Facebook group because I know there's going to be lots of Divi web developers in there. So go to really niche Facebook groups to find a core of people who know what they're talking about. Um, I There are a couple of companies that offer editing services. I know, Maud, you said you were thinking about that. And one of them that I use is called VidChops. Um, I will write it in the chat here. Um, and they they charge a, stand, a, a monthly fee and you just pay that fee and they will edit three videos a week for you. Um, <clears throat> and so that for me takes the stress out of worrying about how much, because I know how much it is every week, every month. Um, and it's quite reasonable if you've got a lot of content. Um, and yeah, I guess just make sure that you, if you know what the process is and you really are prescriptive about what you want, then they're going to have a better chance of giving you what you want. I think in the first instance, I was like, here's some video footage, make it amazing, show me what you can do. <laughs> and then of course, I'm not going to like what they give me because they don't know what I want. Mm -hmm. um, so the more detail you give them in the first instance, the better outcome, then you can guide them. And in, if after a month, they're not giving you what you want, then, you know, it hasn't worked out, you find someone else. But um, I think the other advice is when you're taking someone on, rather than asking them to do something for free to show you what they do, pay them, pay them in the first instance to do something for you. Then they feel invested. Then you see their best work. And, and then you'll know really quickly whether they're right or wrong, rather than wasting a long time trying to get to that point, you know? So that's, that's my advice on, on hiring and right. building a team. But Thanks. it is tricky, it's tricky. Do you, do you have any experience with moving people from working part-time to working full-time? Um, so my freelancers have always been on, I don't think anyone's ever worked completely full-time they've either been yeah. on retainers so a monthly retainer and there's a certain level of expectation of what they'll deliver in that month um or that you'll pay just, them anyway even if you cannot provide them with that yeah, much work yeah um yeah. so like i had a script writer when i was pregnant and i needed to i needed to film like seven videos a week minimum and um, so between seven and 15 videos a week to make sure I had enough content to go out after I had my baby. So I could still have three to four months off filming um, because you just look dreadful when you first have a baby. There's just no way you're getting in front of a camera. So um, I had a script writer and she was having to produce a number of scripts a week. And so I just paid her on a monthly basis. And she was on that retainer knowing she'd have to produce a certain amount of work each month. Um, but then other people, I would just pay for the work that they do. So on an hourly rate or on a project based rate, um, I have a web de developer who's on a retainer, monthly retainer, and that's to fix any problems like that as they arise. So if my website suddenly went down, they're there. And I know that I'm just paying this standard amount. But if there was more work that need doing that was outside of the ordinary, like we wanted to develop a uh, interactive chart or something different then they'd say well that's 10 hours additional to what i'd normally do on your site so you'll have to i'll bill you on an hourly rate for that and that's that's how we usually arrange it but we have just gone limited this year to a limited company which means we are looking at taking some people on as an actual employed status so we pay their pensions and all that and national insurance here for them which is a bit scary but um, but yeah it's, it's all part of growing, isn't it? Taking on these challenges. Yeah. I'm yes. so That's sorry to, to stop the discussion. Unfortunately, we have just one minute left. I, to, I have to be honest, I sweat it because it sounds so stressful, but I still hope that you love what you are doing. And I wish you all good luck. Please exchange contacts with each other. Maybe you uh, want to stay in touch for further. You know, maybe you can, would like to meet each other on, uh, online outside of ExpoLingua. And thank you for allowing us to look behind the scenes. It's a huge job what you're doing because uh, the viewers do not realize, you know, behind those fun and enjoy, enjoying videos, you never know how much work is behind it. So uh, it was really great to have you here at ExpoLingua. I do hope that we'll meet you and uh, we'll be welcoming you at our further events. 
it's always nice to talk to you. Uh, thank you for, for all the insights and yes, have a great time of the day, part of the day, because I think Maud is having evening and Pablo uh, too. And yeah, yeah. David there and Anna are starting in the day in the day right now. Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you guys. Thanks guys. Bye. 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 Bye-bye.